Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head to Wallonia or Wallonie in Belgium, the French speaking region in the southeast of the country. And for this one we are going to visit Brasserie de Gion or Brasserie de Légion is the parent company and we're having a look at one of their Goliath beers today. So this one is the Goliath Triple which comes in at 9% and it should be pretty awesome. It was rated at 94 on rate beer when I checked it out. And I have had this beer a few years ago actually. I had this at six degrees north in Aberdeen and this was why I went back and bought a bottle of it quite recently. So I'm really looking forward to reviewing this one. And I've not actually reviewed all that many Belgian beers for you on the channel before. So that's something that I really need to fix actually. So I can promise you over the next little while you will see some more Belgian beer reviews, especially when I come back from Japan after my trip there in the summer. But anyway, as is usual with my beer reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. There's two breweries involved here and a parent company, so I'll tell you a little bit about that. In the description below, you'll find the brewery website, the link to my future reviews that I'll do from Brasserie de Légion. This is the first time I'm trying one of their beers as well. There's all the usual social media. Make sure you check that out. If you want to see more beer reviews, do subscribe to the channel. And as always, to those of you watching in Belgium, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. I love Belgian beer and as I say I really want to review more of it on the channel over the next little while and I apologise in advance in this video for any bad French pronunciations. It's been a very long time since I studied French at school and I didn't study it to too high a level so I apologise for that so please bear with me there. But anyway to tell you about the brewery so originally this beer was brewed by Brasserie de Gion and these guys are based in Irchonvelles in Belgium which is in Wallonia or Wallonie as you would say in French which is the French speaking part of Belgium in the kind of southeast of the country. But the name Irchonvelles literally means hedgehog stream as in a body of water and it's actually only a very small village which is administered as part of the city of At and At is located to the northwest of Mons in southern Belgium. So Brasserie de Gion was founded by brewing engineer Pierre Delcoigne and he apparently studied at the Catholic University of Leuven first in chemical and bioengineering and then later he specialised as a brewing engineer. But in 1997 he and his wife Vinciane Versifoss they bought the castle in Ilchonvelles to start their brewery and the first bottles of the Goliath beer were produced there in the year 2000. But in 2006, De Gion purchased Brasserie Elizelles, and they were, these guys were located only a very short distance away, but they produced the Quantine beers, and this brewery had been founded in 1994 by Philippe Gerard, along with his wife Jacqueline, and, and this was basically after they renovated their old farmhouse, and they built the brewery up to produce four different beers, but when they decided it was time for them to retire, they sold the brewery to Brasserie De Gion, and when the merger took place, the collective company of the two breweries was renamed as Brasserie de Legende. So the brewing of the beers takes place between both locations, in the one in Elizelles and the one in Irchonvelles, and the sites basically are both continually expanding. The brewery also produces its own malt as well at the Beauregard farm, which, is Pierre, which Pierre actually took over from his parents in 2012 when they retired and there they produced about 130 tonnes of barley every year and this is on 17 hectares of land and this is all malted at the Bolol uh, Castle Maltery as well. So these guys are pretty cool in the fact that they produce their own malt and they produce some pretty good beers as well. So just to list the other beers you can get from these guys, so obviously you have the three Goliath beers, the Blonde, the Tripel and the Winter. In the Quentin range you have the Amber, the Blonde and the Organic. There's the Guyas which is the Blonde beer, Ducassis which is a blonde with black currants. There's the Amboro, which is the broom beer, the Saison Voisson, which is an amber beer, and the Hercule, which is a stout beer too. And they also have a special box called Le Rondo de Gion, which is uh, a variety of eight beers brewed originally to celebrate the 13th anniversary of the first brewing of the Guyas beers. So yeah, quite an interesting brewery, an interesting history, and it's cool to see that even though when they brought over another brewery, they did keep these rain the range of beers going. So it's pretty cool little brewery actually and hopefully I can review some more of their beers in the near future. As I said I tried this one back at 6 degrees north in Aberdeen which 6 degrees north incidentally is a brewery in Scotland, a craft brewery who like to specialise in brewing Belgian style beers. So I'll just tell you a little bit about this beer before we open it up. This one is a 9% Tripel beer and the Goliath range is named after the famous parade of the giants in the city of At and this is why the brewery is actually named Brasserie des Gion. It's basically the brewery of the giants and then the local dialect Goliath is pronounced Guyas and that's why they have another beer that is called Guyas and apparently this kind of harks back to the David and Goliath story 
from the Bible. So it's quite an interesting little thing. On the back here it says, Goliath is still being brewed according to the traditional method used by our ancestry with the finest malts and hops. A characterful blonde beer fermented in the bottle and all natural with its rich equ equilibrated taste. Goliath is a source of vitality and strength that will satisfy all beer experts. So I don't know if I can quite call myself a beer expert yet, but it should be pretty nice. I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one. There you can see quite nicely presented. This one has won the award. It says the, the best blonde beer of 2012 in the Beer Awards of Wallonia. And you can see it there is the Goliath top on this one. And yeah, it looks really nice. It's got some other things on here. Pierre Delconne, the brewmaster there. You can see his, sign his signature just on the side of the thing there. But yeah, it should be pretty nice. So let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting here. It comes in at 9% and it goes out of date in June 2016. And I'm filming this one just before that. So let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting here. So yeah. Oh, there you are. That's one of the risks you always have with Belgian beer. Belgian beer can be very, very gassy. And that's maybe the fact that this has been in the bottle for a little while, so we'll just need to pour it carefully and go. That's always a risk you have when you do beer reviews. Yeah, we'll maybe leave it at that for the moment and we'll let it just settle down a little bit and then we can pour the rest of it out. There's enough here to have a look at the aroma and the colour I think. So as you can see, this beer is poured exactly as you'd expect a triple to a nice orangey kind of amber colour, quite a rich sort of golden amber colour there actually. There's a finger of a frothy white head but I'm sure if we'd poured more of it out we definitely would have got more of a head on it but looks as you would expect. If you can see if I put my fingers behind it, it does have a degree of transparency to it but it's definitely that bright orange golden amber colour. There is a little bit of sediment visible in the bottom of the bottle there and a solid finger of, yeah I'd say a perfect white kind of head on this one. This is a little bit bumpy, it's got some bigger bubbles there, it's not quite as frothy as some of the other beers that you'll come across, but I think maybe just because this beer is about a year old or so, that's probably the reason why it kind of fizzed up like that, because it has been sitting for a little while, but it looks really really nice, exactly as you'd expect from a Belgian beer. There's one or two little big bubbles sticking to the side of the glass, and a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head, but overall it looks really nice. So let's take a look at the aroma here and then we'll pour the rest of it. So yeah, on first note you've got that typical bready character, that sort of bready yeastiness that you expect from a Belgian triple beer. You can smell a bit of a kind of herbal and grassy hop coming off this as well though, which is quite interesting. We'll sugar it up a little bit and see what else we can get from it. Yeah, you can smell a little bit of an almost coriander and peppery spice coming off this as well. So big bready and yeasty character, some peppery and sort of coriander spice coming off it, some caramel in there too. I want to say maybe a little bit of biscuit as well. But yeah, I'll pour a little bit more in and just see what difference that makes. Maybe I've just not quite got enough and there is some sediment there pouring out of this one. Yeah, you can see that's the last of it there. That should settle down quite nicely and you can see actually that the head has got considerably more frothy with the last little bit of it going into the glass but it looks exactly as you'd expect from a Belgian triple they could say. So yeah, it's got an interesting fruity character to this one. It's got a kind of underlying citrus. There's maybe a little bit of an apple pear-y character to it as well and that mixes quite well with the kind of spiciness that you're getting from the beer. But after pouring that extra malt in, you can, or that extra part in, you can really smell more of the bready characters. More of the caramel is coming out too. And it's almost got that little bit of that kind of wheaty, yeasty character that you expect of Belgian beers. And you could see the other sediment coming in. And the beer, of course, has got a little bit more opaque. I think you can see that there. There's not as much light passing through as there was before. But yeah, it smells really nice. It smells even better now that the full thing's poured, to be honest. So I always say the sediment that comes in the Belgian beers is part of the taste. But yeah, it smells really nice. There's a bit of herbal, grassy, kind of floral character coming out of the hops. Some citrusy notes in there. I want to say it's a little bit kind of lemony, but not too strongly lemony actually. It's more a kind of peary apple fruit that you're getting off this one. But it smells really nice. It has everything that you would expect of a triple beer. So just enjoy the aroma of it before you actually get stuck into it. But we'll have a go of this beer now.
yeah, it's really nice. There's a good bit of caramel breadiness coming out of this too. It smells lovely. So now that it's done exploding, let's actually get stuck into this beer. So this one is the Goliath Triple from originally from Brasserie de Gion, now part of Brasserie de Legende from from Ichon Veltz in Belgium. Skoll. Skoll as we would say in Sweden, Slangia as we would say in Scotland. But yeah, that's nice. Hmm. They said in this one that it becomes a little bit more punchy fruit-wise as it gets a bit older. And this one's getting towards the end of its shelf life actually. So you can taste a little bit of that. So maybe I'll need to try like a brand new one at some point too and review that for you. But you can get a nice little bit of the fruity character in this beer. But overall it is actually quite well balanced. Yeah, that's really nice. So as you would expect from a trip hill, in the middle of your palate you've got a nice kind of bready character that just goes right across the middle of the tongue there. It's really nicely done. And on top of that, there's almost a little bit of a, a kind of wheaty character for me. It does have a little bit of a, a kind of slightly wheaty character, but there's a good bit of coriander in there. That just kind of adds a nice dimension to that big bready doughy yeast that dominates the middle of the palate. There's maybe a little bit of peppery character to it as well, which I was picking up in the aroma. But yeah, it's nice. There's a good bit of caramel in this one too, covering up the, the alcohol. The alcohol doesn't feel too strong in this beer actually, but it's really nice. The, the flavours in this beer are very, very well balanced. I would I'd love to try the actual blonde beer and make a comparison with this, but this is because this is a really nice beer. Yeah. So on top of that nice malty base, you've got a bit of sweet caramel in there too, and that's just kind of taken the sort of boozy alcohol flavours in there. This is really nice actually. There's a bit of a kind of herbal hoppy character to this one. You can feel that as you move out towards the edge of the tongue. Around the front part of the palate there's some grassiness there, just a little bit of a kind of floral character as well actually. But it's really nicely balanced this beer. Around the back edges of the palate there's maybe a little touch of earthy character in there as well, but it's overall it's a really really nice beer actually. And what's interesting about this brewery like I say is that they make their own malt so you have something that is very very local to Ishan Vales and El Zeles as well, and the, the city of Art, I guess. But yeah, that's a really nice beer. I always enjoy these triples, and you can actually taste a little bit of a difference in them when you go from city to city and region to region throughout Belgium. It's really nice, and even when you go into the Netherlands as well, you get some kind of uh, old style triple beers too. La Trappe, of course, the Trappist brewery there being a prime example of that. But this is really nice. If you get the chance to try this, I would recommend that you do. It has everything you would expect from a triple, but for me it's a little bit of the hoppy character that's standing out. That sort of slightly herbal character mixing with the floral flavours that's really nice in this one. And the malt base is a little bit different too. I think the 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 yeasty bready character just tastes a bit different too but overall it's it's very very nice and like I say you get little quirks in this style of beer when you go to different parts of Belgium and I think this is the first one that I've tried from that very kind of southeastern part of Belgium actually but that's nice if you get the chance to try this I really would recommend that you do if you love triple beers you will certainly enjoy this one. The bready yeasty character is very nice. The slightly coriander and almost peppery spice in this goes together. The caramel is there, but like I say, the wee quirky bit in this beer for me is the sort of uh, herbal and floral aspect of the hops. That's really nicely done, I would say. But in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, I'd say this is kind of mid to full body. It's got smooth carbonation, so a quite an oily mouthfeel as well. There's a little tiny bit of alcohol warmth in the aftertaste for this one. You can just feel it down here a little bit. There's some smoothness to the malt base. It's quite sweet as well at the same time. And there's a little bit of dry character from the hop. In the aftertaste, it's really that floral and kind of herbal character that's just lingering there around the edge of the tongue. Like I say, there's a little bit of earthiness in the back corner of the palate too, and some of the fruity, slightly fruity juicy character. It's definitely a citrus. Just pay attention to that. 
behind the front curve of the tongue there, there's a little bit of a citrusy character in there. It's almost a mix between a slightly lemony citrus, but also some kind of pea the apple thing in this, but that goes quite well with the sort of herbal character you're getting from the hops. It's almost got a little bit of a kind of medicinal flavour to it, this beer actually, which is really quite nice. It's, it's very interesting this one, because normally I would associate the medicinal flavours with the Dubels and the quadruples and things like that, the actual darker Belgian beers, but this one has turned out really quite nice. So yeah, um, if you get the chance to try this one, go and try the Goliath Triple from Brasserie de Légion or Brasserie de Gion in, uh, in Belgium. This was really nice to try and I'm glad that I finally got to do the review of it. As I say, I want to do more Belgian beer reviews for you over the next little while. But yeah, um, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on the Goliath Triple in the in the comments section below. Let me know your favourite beers from Brasserie de Légion Day as well. I'd love to review some more of them, but let me know what ones you guys would recommend I look at. But until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. As I say, to those of you in Belgium, please do get in touch and let me know some other Belgian beers and breweries. I'll definitely be reviewing some more Belgium stuff over the next couple of months, so do get in touch with me. But until the next time, slange just now, and I will catch you soon with more Belgian beers. The Goliath Triple from Brasserie de Légende, Brasserie de Gion as well, near At in Belgium. Slange.